So on this bottom half, uh, we're going to step away from thetas and betas and call them S and Ts, but the problem is still pretty much the same. So in this case, the sine of S is 3 fifths, and we're told that S is in quadrant 1, so that's nice. Everybody's positive in that quadrant. And then cosine of T is negative 12 over thir uh, 13, and we're told ourselves that we're in quadrant number 3. So uh, that means sine and tangent, or excuse me, sine and cosine are negative, and the tangent is nice and positive. Okay, so that's what we know from that information. So again, to find the sine of S minus T, when we go use the, uh, the identity, this becomes the sine of S, the cosine of T, and then minus the cosine of T, and the sine of S. So we basically have to go find that. And then the same thing over here. Uh, here, this is the tangent of S plus the tangent of T all over 1 uh, minus the tangent of s tangent of t. So basically what we have to do is find the sine, uh, we already know the sine of s, we already know the cosine of t, but I need to find the cosine of t, the sine of s, the tangent of s, and the tangent of t. So if I can find those four things, I basically come back, dump it into the formula, and we're off to the races. So we have some analysis to do. So let me go ahead and uh, come to another sheet of paper. And what we know is that the sine of S, right, is equal to 3 over 5. And sine, excuse me, S is in quad 1. Uh, so how about we again use our x, y, r definitions. So here this is y and this is r. So we know that x is going to be positive. And so for this, what we end up getting uh, is we got x squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. So x squared is equal to 25 minus 6 minus 9. x squared is 16. Taking the square root, we've introduced a plus minus, but we're going to keep the positive root because we're in quad number 4. So now I can basically find everybody. I know x is 4, y is 3, and r is 5. So what is the cosine of this angle s or arc length s? Well, it's my x over my r. So there's cosine of s. What's the tangent of s? Well, in this case, it'd be my y over x. So it'd be 3 quarters. So, so far, so good. All right, so back to over here. We now know the tangent of s and the, uh, oops, I think I messed up here. Yeah, I'll come back to that. But um, we basically have that, so we, we can start filling in some details. All right, and I'll, I'll fix what I, what I broke there in a moment. So what about T, right? So for T, we know that the cosine of T is equal to negative 12 over 13. Um, and T, we're told, is in quad 3. And so we need to know what the sine of t and the, co and the tangent of t is. Uh, what I'll do in this case is, uh, since I've used x, y, r's, how about we use the identities? So we know that cosine squared of t plus the sine squared of t is equal to 1. So negative 12 over 13 squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So our sine squared is 1, that'll be minus 144, I believe that's 169. So our sine of t, uh, this is 169 over 169, which I believe is 25 over 169. Take a square root, introduce a plus minus, we get that the sine of t is, because uh, we're in quad 3, minus, that looks like 5 over 13. And so now that I have sine t, we can find the cosine, right? Because cosine is the sine value over the cosine value. And so putting this together, we have negative 5 over 13 and negative 12 over 13, multiplying by reciprocal, we get 5 twelfths, all right? So there's our, oops, this is a tangent, I'm sorry. So the tangent of t is 5 twelfths. So armed with this knowledge, I think we can go fix this. And let me fix this real quick. Let me make sure I use the identity right. So sine s, cosine t, 
and then co uh, there's the problem cosine s sine of t all right so uh, here's what we know then so if we put us all together to find the sine of s minus t well the sine of s was given it's three-fifths the cosine of t was given as 12 over 13 <clears throat> excuse me the cosine of s we found to be four-fifths and then the sine of t we found to be negative 5 over 13. Okay, so subbing all that value in, we're off to the races. I believe over here uh, we get negative 36 over 65. We have a negative and a negative, so that's plus 20 over 65. And so putting this together, I believe we get negative 16 over 65 as our exact value. So the sine of s minus t would be negative 16 over 65 for the information that is given. Uh, for over here, we know that the tangent of s, we found that to be uh, 3 fourths. And then the tangent of t, we found to be 5 twelfths. And this is all over 1 minus, well, the tangent of s is 3 quarters, and the tangent of t is 5 twelfths. So again, we just have a bunch of fraction work ahead of us to do. Um, upstairs, um, we find the common denominator, so 3 over 3. So that's 9 twelfths minus 5 twelfths. And on the bottom here, we have 15 over 48. So this is 4 twelfths. And down here, this is 48 over 48. So 48 take away 15, that's uh, 33. So 33 over 48. Um, if we want to reduce this, let me bring it up here. This is 1 third multiplied by the reciprocal. And then 3 goes into 48 16 times. So we get 16 over 33. All right, so the tangent of s plus t uh, in this case uh, would basically be 16 over 33. And so there uh, is how you find some exact values of uh, some signs of sums and differences or tangents, tangents of sums or differences. There's a lot of back work where you have to go find uh, some exact values of the individual pieces. And then it's a lot of algebra and simplification, uh, a lot of fraction work. All right, so hopefully all the fraction work I've been making you guys do is going to pay off because it's fractions on steroids to get these exact values. All right, so we'll move into some new territory now that we're done with exact values. We'll talk about simplifying and verifying identities in some videos coming soon.